guess what? Has your stomach been bothering you a lot and you can't figure out why? Even if you go on gluten free? Well, I'm going to reveal to you some pretty amazing information in regards to two food additives which are common in our food supply, which generally, without holding back, are killing us slowly as a population, especially here in the United States. In the public release title, widely used food additive promotes colitis, obesity, and metabolic syndrome. And it does far more than that, like causing inflammation, overconsumption, but then again, I digress. In the citation title, for you researchers out there below, dietary emulsifiers impact the mouse gut microbiota, promoting colitis and metabolic syndrome. Published in this nature, March 2015. Now let's go directly into the quotes of the researchers itself to explain how they made this connection between these two very widely used food additives and basically intestinal destruction. Here we go. Gut microbiota are disturbed in inflammatory bowel disease, which I'll now refer to as IBD, and metabolic syndrome. They suggest that emulsifiers may be partially responsible for this disturbance and increased incidence of these diseases. So the researchers were kind of going, well, Let's see how this connection plays out. And this is what they said also. A key feature of these modern plagues, and that's what they call it, a plague, is the alteration of the gut microbiota in a matter that promotes inflammation. The dramatic increase in these diseases has occurred despite consistent human genetics, meaning we haven't changed at all. Why are these problems like diabetes, obesity, metabolic syndrome, I should say, uh, Crohn's disease, colitis, all beginning to rise so dramatically if we're still the same people. So it must be an external event. And this is the external event which they found, but like proceed forward, suggesting a pivotal role of for an environmental factor. End their quote. They took mice uh, and they fed them two common food emulsifiers. Ready? Here they are. And I'll mention them again at the end so you don't have to try to remember them now. Polysorbate 80 and carboxymethyl cellulose. Now, the polysorbate 80 is going to be a emulsifier in a lot of ice creams and things like that. You know, we used to use less of them, but instead we decided to use this type of detergent. But carboxymethyl cellulose, which generally from vegetable stores, check your gluten-free products. Because if it's in there, you're going to want to switch products. But I digress. At doses seeking to model the broad consumption of the numerous emulsifiers that incorporated into almost all processed foods. Such changes in bacteria, because this, these emulsifiers change what's happened to the good bacteria in the gut, which I should use instead of the word microbiota. So basically it's changing all these friendly bacteria in the gut to something weird and disturbing. Such changes in bacteria triggered chronic colitis in mice genetically prone to this disorder. So if your immune system was kind of out of whack and you're taking this, boom, colitis. Due to abnormal immune systems, as they said, in contrast, in mice, which are normal immune systems, you're going, well, I'm okay. I don't have to worry about this. Who cares? Well, even if your immune system was normal, the emulsifiers induced low grade or mild intestinal inflammation and metabolic syndrome, meaning bye-bye blood sugars and insulin. Characterized by increased levels of food consumption, obesity, hyperglycemia, and insulin resistance. So, the food emulsifiers actually stimulate your appetite wanting you to eat more. So advice to those looking to reduce caloric consumption, avoid polysorbate 80 and avoid carboxymethylcellulose like the plague. But again, I digress and I shall proceed forward. Rather, our findings reinforce the concept suggested by earlier work that low grade inflammation caused by these two emulsifiers results in an altered microbiota can be an underlying cause of excess eating. And I re and I basically state again, carboxymethylcellulose is common in gluten-free food. And the reason I want to uh, bring that point home is because a lot of individuals that have celiac disease are eating this food additive and basically they're trying to reduce their intestinal inflammation, not realizing when they're trying to do the right thing by going gluten-free, they're actually doing the wrong thing. So in basically closing statements, watch out for these two, avoid them and try to get them out of the marketplace altogether. And I apologize for having to speak fast, but I had to get it all in under a certain amount of time. It's Ralph Turgiano, signing off once again, and I really, really hope this helps some of you out there. Thank you.